Hello, my name is Joshua Knight. I'm joined by my friend Eugene Lenzmo from Western Central Africa and Cameroon. And we're going to talk to you about solar water in Cameroon. And um, I am with the Global Hope Network International. My friend Eugene is with the Association for Sustainable Development. I'll let him introduce himself a little bit more after the fifth slide when I'll pass it over to him. I've been working in water projects for about the last 20 years with different organizations. So we first want to talk about the role of water and how it's come to play such a powerful part in rural water projects that at first it was really only available in big cities. But now it's, it's come to these small communities to allow them to have water when they don't even have grid power, which is, which is really great. And so what we're going to talk about today are some of the challenges that uh, you can have in bringing solar water to a community and the solutions that'll help meet those challenges. And then finally, some uh, great things that have come out of our case study. So first of all, our path to sustainability, how can we get there uh, to a successful project? So we found over the years that having history with the communities that we're working with, the region that we're in, the language, the cultures, uh, but also just to fail and to learn on our own what works and what doesn't work uh, as tactile uh, organizations. And we found that moving at the community's pace is incredibly important and actually vital to a community's project uh, lasting because if, uh, if, if, if we don't wait for them, if we let, uh, let's say partners, donors tell us that we're ready to move on, when the community is not ready, it will end up being our own project and not the communities. And that goes into financial ownership, that the community is actually paying some of, they have their own skin in the game when they are paying for a portion of the project. And it also is incredibly important for them to give in-kind contributions that maybe they have a sizable, uh, but not, um, uh, not the majority of the project uh, from their financial ownership, but they can get to maybe 50% when we include their in-kind contributions, which can be the labor uh, of both in the field, it can be providing uh, food for technicians, uh, for the whole community when they come out, for uh, partners when they come to see the project, room and board for the technicians. It can be land that's given for free for the project. They can do local material, uh, um, um, uh, transport when it's when it's dropped off in the middle of the community they can bring it to the project and also translation for partners when they come and sometimes for technicians uh, also these legal agreements uh, we found that really this is something that we need to step back on uh, when the community says that they'll do x y and z that uh, when when push comes to shove that yep we've said that we're going to do this and then lastly the training uh, technical of course how do you run this water project but financial, how do you get money from yourselves? How do you, this may be their first paid utility. And lastly, they may not even have um, a water committee. And so getting that started is really helpful. So what do our communities need? Well, usually they're lacking, of course, water, and that's why they'll come to us. But uh, behind that is going to be economics. They, they're not sure that they could ever pay uh, for this project. And so we want to help them. Uh, to find the resources, economic and organizational and technical, to be able to make this project possible. And so I'm going to pass it off to Eugene now to talk about the three villages of Dodongo, Sabangari, and Banki. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Joshua, for leading me into this presentation. I am uh, Eugene Lenzomo, as Joshua already introduced, and I'm working with Association for Sustainable Development as the technical advisor. We, we worked, I worked with Joshua more, I've worked with Georgia for more than 15 years and we've been working to providing water solutions for communities. And recently we, we got into providing solar water in three communities of Didango, Bankim and uh, Sabongari. Slide please. So we're going to talk about the learning objectives, the, what we learned in this project. Our first objective was to understand the challenges of building a water project. They also look at the advantages and disadvantages of the using power solar option 
for the for the, for, 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 for powering raw water supply project. And then we look at the achievements. Next slide. Learning objective will have challenges. In this project, we, there was a partnership that was built between the communities of Bankim, Jidango, and Sabongari with our own organization, which we called Association for Sustainable Development, which worked as a management and mobilization partner in the community, as well as Global Hope Network International, which was a technical partner, then Rotary International, which was a financial partner. Community characteristics. Bankim is basically made up of several ethnic groups, including Bororos, with a population of 1,800, basically subsistent farmers and small traders. Didango as well as Sabongari, made up of indigenous Bororo community with a population of about 3,000 for Didango and 1,600 for Sabongari. They are mainly cattle grazers practicing transhumanism, which basically indicates that in the dry season, they go down to the slopes with their animals to look for pasture. And in the rainy season, they go back onto the hills. Some of them equally are petite small traders. In these communities, we have the various water sources include springs, valley streams, unprotected wells, and rainwater harvesting during the rainy season. Didango has an obsolete pipe bond system, which is seasonal that was built more than 40 years ago and has not been able to satisfy the community recently. In these communities, health and education in 2019, by the time we do the assessment, we realized that six out of 10 children visit the hospitals on a weekly basis because of stomach related issues. While on, on the educational part of it, several school, two on 10, children attend primary school or one on 20 attend secondary school or they drop out. This makes the level of understanding in the community to be quite low. And so we need to provide a lot of education for them in their projects. The community came to us requesting for assistance in the water projects that prompted us to do an assessment, which we did in association with Global Health Network and other stakeholders, we realized that the only solution in that community was to provide solar water because of the community's geographical features. Next slide. Bankim and Sabongari are located on a flat gentle topography with wide valleys and their streams are quite far away from the, from the settlement area. Didango is located below a big savanna mountain that is dry and with springs that are far below. And the only need, with all this of all these geographical features, we can only provide affordable water in the community by doing a borehole and providing solar that will pump the water to storage tanks and distribute by gravity. Financial commitment, the communities the communities com complied to 10% capital cost of the, of the project. And they provided the in-kind that Joshua already explained, including labor, including uh, local, material, local material, food and board for visiting technicians, while International Rotary Foundation provided 90% of capital cost covering management and training. In our new projects, which we have now, we have stepped up contributions from 10 to 15%, basically because we want to make sure that the communities assume ownership. We have several communities asking for, for water and to make sure that it's competitive, we need, we stepped it up to 15%. Next slide. Community education is very, very important because if we do a project in the community without the community consent, it can be abandoned. To assume that they own the project, we need to teach them to know that a project realized in a village belongs to the community. It should not be abandoned like government projects which are brought into the community or the rich always providing for the poor. And when there's problems in the, in, the, in, the, in the system, they always go back to the rich to come and repair. So if once they accept on community ownership, then we are, we are sure that 
will not have failure in the future. Next slide. In these communities, we have problems of technicians and equipment. There is the availability of technicians and equipment is very, it's not possible, it's uh, difficult because they only found in big cities around the area. We need to source them from towns and it's always expensive to bring them in to do work and go back. Next slide. <clears throat> Advantages of solar system. In the solar system, we know that more, less maintenance is required because the, the, the equipment doesn't have movable parts which can easily break down. The input of fuel into the, into the system like petrol, gasoline is completely absent and that keeps a lot of money in the, in the, in the hands of the community. Also, energy from the sun is quite free and available and abundant all the times. The lifespan of the, of the projects of the solar system also is about 25 years, which gives a lot of leverage for them for the project to be able to be sustainable. In that case, it can pay for itself within the last within the 25 years. The environment is also the environmental sustainability of the project is also assured, knowing that the the, the system doesn't produce noise, it doesn't produce uh, oil, water pollution, no soil pollution. So in that case, it is environmentally sound. It is equally a relevant technology within areas where we have off-grid areas and weak grid technology areas. So it's quite good for rural communities, which are completely far out from developmental uh, infrastructure. But the disadvantage is, it needs a huge initial capital, though this capital is mitigated with time, but communities find it difficult to, to come out with, the, with that. Communities, so that once there is water, the energy will be able to pump water and store, which could be used for 24 hours. The location of the, the tanks and the location of this infrastructure is always out of secured areas, either down in the valleys on top of the hills. And because of that, there is always, there always being this incidence of theft could also be rampant. Cloud cover within the community also, especially in, within our own area from July to, to September, cloud cover is always very high, which means that the sun's rays will not be able to provide enough energy that will be able to power these solar, solar pumps. Spare parts and technicians are also very difficult to have in this in this environment, and they, they have to go back to the cities to bring in technicians. There is also lack of expertise within the within the area. Next slide. We look at the achievements. At the end of the day, we were able to provide water for the community, and they were able to be happy. And because of good organization, the community is able to pay monthly rates. Those rates, because we installed metals in all stand tabs, and those who want to take it to their homes have to put in metals so that they can be able to pay what they consume. And because of this, Jidango and Sabongari were able to provide an alternative solution in the rainy season because they had the money to pay for at grid in the times where the cloud cover was high and they couldn't have enough money. This assured us of ownership because they have assumed ownership and the right to take responsibility for the water project. So this, the organization also was quite good and they are able to move ahead with their project. Next slide. Indicators. Initially, we had problems of health within the communities such that now at the moment, the number of hospitalizations has reduced from six per week in the hospitals to about two per week for children below five years. From the school, from the schools, we also got reports that seven children now come, come to school late out of 50, which used to have initially. And because of that, children and women have time for recreation. They have time to adventure into new, more uh, business because they have enough time because the burden of water has been removed from their head. 
there are lots of fun the, the functional communities in the community are quite working. The water community is working well. The credit that the, the most of the communities in the communities are functioning very well, especially the water committee and in the caretaker committee. Next slide. In this project, we had lessons which we learned, which we need to carry on to next projects. Cash payment by rich politicians or government is a deterrent simply because at banking, we realized that when they came to us, at the point they were supposed to realize the project, they did have enough money. They went to the mayor who was able to pay the money. The commitment to the community is not more, it's not good compared to the other two communities. The size of the solar as well, which we introduced in this area, we need to do more on solar sizing so that we will be able to put a solar size that will be able to provide enough energy that even under cloud cover could be able to provide water. The quality of technicians as well is also a problem because we have more often hands-on technicians who learn the art in the field and practice. But as of recent, more and more people are graduating from universities with solar degrees and will be able to come into the field and then help in the situation. And, you know, moving forward also, we will consider in our assessment, introducing a hybrid system such that in the near future, if there's grid in the community and they have problems, they can easily switch to grid, but they can use generators at periods when the cloud cover is heavy. As a conclusion, the future of water in rural communities and particularly in off-grid areas would depend on solar. This is the only available energy that could get into those areas cheaper and power their water systems. This will be very possible when we have good technicians resulting from training that is coming up, good training, then also because the cost of the equipment, since it's a novelty within the the cost is also dropping down and it will be a relevant technology for the rural communities. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you as well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.